His name is Amador Cortez Mesa. The 36-year-old Mexican national is charged with involvement in a prostitution ring based in the Atlanta area that victimized women and girls smuggled from Mexico, some as young as 14. They were brought in with a romantic promises, with job promises, young girls from a certain state of Mexico brought up, smuggled in, immediately forced into prostitution. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Special Agent Brock Nicholson says four members of the same family were involved in the prostitution ring. 27-year-old Otto Jaime Larios Perez, who's admitted one count of providing false information, drove victims to several secret locations in the Atlanta area, forcing them to see multiple clients per day. They were kept locked up in several houses. The houses had bars on the windows, locks on the outside of the door. Uh, we find 11 additional victims ranging in age from 14 to 28. Um, all confirmed victims, all have been trafficked for the purpose of prostitution. This um, case offers a glimpse into how these rings operate. There's a lot of word of mouth. Um, and a, a lot of the word of mouth actually comes with these little business cards that often have something very innocuous on them um, that you only would know that it's a business card for a prostitution ring if somebody had whispered it to you. As a former prosecutor, Luis C. De Baca says the level of cruelty of these prostitution rings is hard to imagine. We have situations in the United States, cases that I've worked on when I was with the Justice Department, involving women who had to uh, service up to 50 customers a day. Um, just a crushing amount of, of um, what in effect is a daily uh, set of rapes. We found a Mexican woman who was only 15 years old when she became a victim. Her boyfriend in Mexico promised a good life in the United States and smuggled her through the border. Once here, she was forced into prostitution. She agreed to talk to us on the condition that we protect her identity. El primer día fueron 20, después 25. Y así fue subiendo. Llegué a, a trabajar hasta 60 personas en un solo día. Claudia, not her real name, describes to us a world of abuse and beatings, drugs, forced sex, and sleepless nights with strangers. Y había jóvenes de mi misma edad que no aguantaban y las obligaban a consumir droga, cocaína, marihuana, para que ellas trabajaran más porque nosotras éramos... Eh, Las niñas que teníamos menos edad, o sea, como 15, 16, 18, llegaba mucha gente a buscar niñas de esa edad. Entonces, nosotras trabajábamos mucho. Maya Hasek is a social worker who works with law enforcement agencies to rescue victims of human trafficking who come from all over the world. It must be really difficult for you to see the situation in which some of these victims come to you. It's very difficult to see them in these situations, specifically sexual exploitation, and uh, more so seeing minors go through this and knowing that their lives are never going to be the same, um, that they're going to be scarred forever. What is the greatest challenge that you guys face when you're trying to help a victim in this situation? The greatest challenge that we have is getting the victim to actually admit that they are a victim. They have been brainwashed by the traffickers for so long and told that the trafficker is the only person that they can trust. And back to the suspects in the Atlanta case, Amador Cortez Mesa and the others accused of human trafficking have pled not guilty. Their trial is due to begin in November. Rafael Romo, CNN, Atlanta.